So now we have an overview of the ECG tracing based on lead to according to Eindhoven. We have a P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. We will discuss the details step by step. And these arrows indicate the vectors, the depolarization or repolarization waves, which we will discuss in the next slides. Before, a quick recap. Always remember this rule, depolarization and repolarization waves. This rule is very helpful to understand always, to memorize. Depolarization wave from minus electrode to plus electrode, upward deflection. Depolarization wave from plus electrode to minus electrode, negative deflection. And the opposite is true for repolarization. So now we have lead two according to Eindhoven, remember. In lead two, the minus electrode, the, the negative electrode is here, plus electrode is here. SA node triggers the first signal. You would expect a deflection. This would be logical to assume. However, the mass of the SA node is so small, the number of cells is so small relatively, so it produces no signal, the signal is so weak we see no voltage reading in ECG. So the flat line just before the beginning of the P wave, which is the excitation of the atria, this flat line before the excitation of the atria, this is the excitation of the SA node. Again, too small mass, too weak a signal. It cannot produce a signal at all, flat line, no voltage detectable. Now we start the depolarization of the atria, which is signified by the P wave. Now we have depolarization wave going from the minus to plus electrode. So it should give a positive deflection. Indeed, the P wave is positive. Depolarization wave from the negative electrode to the positive electrode, positive deflection. At this point in time, remember, the signal has already arrived at the AV node, indicated by this arrow. Here I've got some numbers that are very helpful to understand, but I'll discuss them with different pathologies in a separate video. It takes, the P wave takes less than 0.12 seconds. Now comes the brief isoelectric line or zero potential after the P wave, after the P wave. Here, at this point, the atria are fully excited. No voltage detectable. At this point, we have reached already the AV bundle, the AV node, then down the conduction system of the heart, we reach the His bundle, and then left and right bundle branches, and then Purkinje fibers. We're talking about these regions. These non-contactile cells of the conduction system of the heart, like the SA node, produce no signal, too little mass, too few cells, they produce no signal, hence the flat line. We also have the so-called PR interval. What does it stand for? Here we start the excitation of the atria. At this point, they are fully excited, this line here. PR interval describes the following. It represents the time between the onset of atrial depolarization, which is here, and the onset of ventricular depolarization, which starts right here, I will discuss in the next slide. Okay? And normally it takes about, this PR interval takes about 0.12 to 0.2 seconds. If it is prolonged, this may be an indication for pathologies, which I will discuss in a separate video. Normally, if this is a light prolongation, is may be an indication for conduction block, AV conduction block. Now we start the depolarization of the ventricles, which is also known as the QRS complex. Here we see the vector, the brown. The depolarization wave indicated by this vector is showing from left to right, from the plus electrode to the negative electrode. The beginning of the excitation of the ventricle starts from the left ventricle and proceeds to the right. Why? There are many reasons. The major reason is that the Purkinje fibers in the left ventricle are much more pronounced compared to the right ventricle. And the left ventricle mass is also much larger than the right ventricle. So we start at the septum, 
in the ventricles from left to right. The depolarization wave indicated by this brown arrow is moving from the positive electrode to the negative electrode. This will give us a negative deflection known as the Q wave. Okay? So, we start the depolarization of the ventricles from left ventricle to right ventricle from the plus electrode to the minus electrode, hence the negative deflection. Now we have this vector here, this depolarization wave. This vector is the strongest by far. Why? It represents the largest parts of the ventricles that are being almost instantaneously depolarized. So we here see the depolarization wave spreading from here all the way down. Many millions of cells in the ventricles, and this vector in blue represents the depolarization wave direction from the minus electrode to the plus electrode, hence positive deflection, and many cells, large mass, hence a strong deflection. This is the so-called R wave. Okay? Then we have the last regions of the ventricles to depolarize from here to here. And the depolarization wave is indicated by this red vector. We can see by the red arrow. It's going from this direction to this direction, basically from the plus electrode to the minus electrode. This means depolarization wave from positive electrode to negative electrode, negative deflection. This is the S wave, a small, deflection because we have here very few cells compared to the mass which we have right here on the left ventricle. So now we have reached a state where the ventricles are fully depolarized, fully excited, indicated by the negative charges everywhere. And this is the flat line. Ventricles are fully depolarized. No voltage because full depolarization, remember, gives no signal. This area is also known as ST segment, and it might be elevated or depressed, and this stands for pathologies, which I will also discuss in a separate video. Again, remember this rule, golden rule. Depolarization wave from minus to plus electrode, upward deflection. Depolarization wave from plus to minus, downward deflection. And the opposite is true for repolarization. Now, why is the T wave positive? Remember, the depolarization starts from the endocardium, spreads out to the epicardium. So the endocardium is first to depolarize, the epicardium is last to depolarize. However, the repolarization is such that the epicardium, although it was depolarized last, it is first to repolarize. The reasons will be discussed in the next slides. So for now, please remember the following. We have here a repolarization wave, and the vector of this repolarization is showing from here to here. So this is a repolarization wave going from the plus electrode to the minus electrode. According to this rule, this will give us a positive deflection. This is why the T wave is positive. A repolarization starts from the epicardium and moves down to the endocardium. A repolarization wave from the plus electrode to the minus electrode will give us an upward deflection. Okay? So, why is the epicardium, why is the repolarization starting from the epicardium? I will discuss some reasons. The major reason is the following. During contraction of the ventricles, the blood vessels in the endocardium are strongly compressed. So, not enough oxygen is reaching them, so the action potentials in the endocardium take longer than the action potentials in the epicardium. We see in this animation the compression of the endocardium much stronger than the epicardium. You will take a look at the action potentials in the endocardium here and epicardium here. The endocardium, the action potential is longer than the action potential in the epicardium. So even though the endocardium starts the depolarization and takes it all the way to the epicardium. While the epicardium is starting to repolarize, you see, 
the endocardium is still excited. This is why the repolarization moves from the epicardium to the endocardium, indicated by the arrow. So to summarize, these are the vectors. The depolarization wave in black here stands for the P wave. Vector two, the brown, this is the depolarization wave for the Q wave. The blue vector, depolarization wave, R wave. Vector four, this is the last region of the ventricles to depolarize, S wave. Vector five, the green, the T wave, repolarization vector. I hope this was helpful.